said, I mean, you dropped a kind of a bombshell, really, <laughs> that three out of ten... It's not a bombshell, it's good news, actually. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> bombshell, in the, bombshell in the sense is just uh, incredible. You know? uh, it's just uh, can't be believed. No, uh, uh, the, 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 I mean, uh, do you believe the figure? Uh, I tend to, because actually when we started to dig up all the research and stats that have been done, it shows an increase, like I said, incidence of you know teenage pregnancies, abortions, so on and so forth, of you know teenage pregnancies, abortions, so on and so forth. But it doesn't really show a correlation of young people who are engaged in sex. So actually, what could be happening is that the higher incidence of teenage pregnancies, abortions, so on and so forth, could actually be contributed by the same pool of people who are sexually active, but who are perhaps now active at an earlier age. Um, they are having multiple sexual partners, which is actually something that we are discovering. Young people are not just sexually active with one person, but I, I think that's probably what you've discovered. They, are, uh, with, they have multiple partners. Uh, it's almost like serial monogamy, you know? Yeah. yeah. And then the other thing is that our young people, perhaps it's also because of exposure to different types of media. Do you see... Um, they are uh, more... Sorry, they are, yeah, they are actually more... Um, they are expanding sexually much more than in the past and so that's why I said it could actually be contributed by the same, same pool, pool of people and not from, that more um, are becoming from active. From a, a demographic point of view, mm -hmm. from a racial point of view, do you see uh, different types or can we put them and say that this more from this race, more from this mm. uh, demographic? Not quite. I don't think there's concrete tests to show that, like that maybe Chinese are more at risk or anything like that. Um, but I, I would say that perhaps uh, what we are finding is that obviously uh, kids who come from more well-to-do families um, are covering it a little bit better. <laughs> I mean, maybe as in the cases don't quite surface. You don't, you don't see sensational news. Um, not so much underreported. I mean, I'm sure MOH, Ministry of Health, or the other ministries could be picking up the statistics, but they don't make headlines, and so they, you know, they don't seem do to be coming from the group. Do you think there's a curious doubt way? I mean, do you do you think that um, teenagers who come from more well-to-do families mm -hmm. uh, are engaging in sex earlier, etc., and also getting in trouble, but not being so reported because if they go to a private clinic for an abortion, it might not be captured by MOH data. Um. I think there could be a possibility, but really the measure of, I mean, the, the kind of material level uh, of the family backgrounds, um, I think it's only one, one component. What I do see is uh, family harmony, especially marital, uh, uh, you know, uh, disharmony, um, is a very important uh, uh, sort of uh, indicator. Um, there are a lot of uh, ch child abuse uh, happening in the family in actually sexually frustrated uh, uh, parents. Oh. Okay, so if you actually interview uh, this child abuse kid or sexually abused kid, um, you, you, you find that actually the emotional bonding between their parents are not that great. And intimacy is very, very bad. Both husband and wives, they are sexually frustrated. And that, that then uh, creates another problem and has a negative impact onto the kids. Okay, so then how should parents deal with their, with their children? Um, when it comes to, when um, it comes to parents like any adults, I think one, they need to be um, you know, actualized in a way, uh, come to a certain kind of balance with their own sexuality. We find that um, you know, many adults are not uh, um, you know, sexually actualized or having a certain balance uh, in, 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 the, in, in the sexuality. And, uh, what do you mean by actualized? Well, in, in a way, they are really able to uh, see, um, you know, intimacy mm. as an important part of their communication, uh, especially as a very vital part in the marriage. Uh, not every uh, husband and wife really have good intimacy. Uh, my observation, um, really, after the five years, uh, we are talking about more than 50% of the husband and wives uh, who are married do not have uh, good quality, do not have uh, good quality. But how does that then uh, affect the children? Well, in, you know, um, hormonal, um, you know, level-wise, we see, of course, very high, um, you know, sex hormones in a male. Right? That's for the father. Mm. Now, uh, in, in a marriage, uh, he still continues to become, uh, well, he's still a man and he's still got his own urge. And if uh, he's not able to then satisfy that libido, uh, then 
this plan may not be very, very balanced if he hasn't got any other alternative options to express the options to express it. I thought you were saying is that it boils down to the family and that I would agree. Uh, what we are seeing is that parents play a very important role in sex education. Um, whether or not you know, the schools are doing enough or society is doing enough, um, as focus on the family, at least we want to really empower not just the youth to make right decisions, but we want to empower youth to make right decisions, but we want to empower the responsibility to feel that they are actually equipped to take back the responsibility to feel that they are actually equipped just in jest, you know, we're talking about when's the right time to start talking to yeah. kids about sex. Um, for us, we believe that actually you should start as young as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, my, my son is presently two, and to us, we are really teaching him sex education. Mm -hmm. And that's because we view sex education as not just about sex per se, but it's teaching him about values, it's teaching him about relationships, it's teaching him about the opposite sex. So, I mean, when he knows he's a boy versus someone else is a girl or mommy's a girl, mm -hmm. that's actually part of sex education. And I think when we begin to educate parents that you know sex education is actually much more holistic they realize it's not that difficult because what most parents get stuck with is the, the birds and bees question mm. you know then they don't know how to address the terms they start feeling a bit awkward you know they are afraid that their child will ask them some personal question which they don't know how to answer but if you view sex education really as first and foremost inculcating that sense of dignity and respect, firstly for yourself and your own body, and also for others and their bodies, that actually can start as young as possible. I think it is also important for the parents to really see it as a form of asset management that, they, that the kids should learn. <laughs> We're talking about emotional asset as well as uh, biological asset. So it's important for them to understand that um, there's a lot of risk in terms of depreciating that uh, emotive elements uh, in a um, negatively engaged relationship that one does experience, whether boy or girl. Um, and then secondly is the risk factors of uh, sexually transmitted disease uh, and other uh, incidental uh, uh, pregnancy, etc., would have an impact on that physical asset management. So I think if the parents are able to really uh, inculcate this sort of uh, you know, them, I think we can then uh, take another position that is the kid's own responsibility in managing their own asset. Now that is important because I think today's kid, they got all kinds of information. We got to empower them, not just uh, taking a paternalistic approach from the adult world, uh, talking down uh, you know, on them. Thank you, Dr. Wei and Joanna. That's all the time we have for tonight. Indeed, it's all about choice and being in control of your own body and emotions, whether you are 12 or 91. Well, we'd like to hear from you. Email us at talkingpoint at channelnewsasia.com. Join us again next Sunday and good night.